first week of the new year 2020, and maybe your resolution or one of them is to do more reading. Well, as always, Chris Hall of McNally Robinson Booksellers can help you with that on this Friday morning. He's joined me in the studio with his recommendations. Hey, Chris, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Simon. Oh, what a pleasure it is to uh, have you back here in the studio in the new year 2020. Uh, I, I imagine it was a, a, a wonderful holiday season. It was a wonderful holiday season. We work really hard in December, but it's fun. And uh, yeah, lots of people came by to see us. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're getting our rest right afterwards, or I did personally. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you mentioned how busy the holiday season is. And this is something that I've always wondered, just before we get to your recommendations. Um, January, a, a, a month of resolution. And uh, mm-hmm. if you go to the gym, you find there's more people people there, I guess, starting right. the year sure. off right, uh, getting fit, getting healthy. Um, is there a similar surge in, in book shoppers looking to tackle that often set resolution of reading more? I think so. I think so. Yeah, we we, um, we sense that. Um, we have, uh, there's, there used to be a big push for personal finance books. Uh, uh, yeah. There isn't quite as much anymore, but it's got that kind of feel. Um, new year, new you is often a uh, uh, a theme of displays and things like that. So yes, we definitely uh, um, tap into that for sure. Well, um, so here you are with your recommendations. The uh, first uh, recommended reading list of, of 2020 uh, mm-hmm. from you. Wh- where do you want to begin? Well, I've got a few novels I've brought with me. The first one is called American Dirt by Janine Cummins. Janine Cummins is a new uh, new name. Uh, this is a, a, a book that their publisher is very excited about. I've been hearing about this book for most of the year. Hmm. Um, it's a... Uh, they, they think they've really caught the essence of uh, one of the big issues of our time, which is uh, the plight of refugees. And, uh, and I think they have. Uh, it, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of excitement behind this. Stephen King is getting behind this mm. one. So uh, this tells the story of Lydia, who lives with her husband and son in Acapulco. They live a middle-class and regular life. Uh, local drug cartels are on the rise, though, and her husband is a journalist, and he takes a stand against them, and then s- suddenly their life is in peril, and they have to flee. So the story is about that uh, a middle class uh, family, uh, not uh, not poor, not uh, um, anything like that, uh, very normal. Uh, but they their lives have changed, so they have to they have to run. Um, and I think this is a book is an example. I've talked about it before of where fiction can get to. Uh, reality in a sense in a in a more effective way than even nonfiction can um, you can work on the level of the very personal but also the symbolic and the representative so you know a real story might do this and that which is representative but then it has its own peculiar thing but when you write a story you can make it up and so you can kind of encapsulate an entire experience uh, in one family and that's what this book uh, does it does very well I was uh, reading some of the reviews um, before you made your way in, and and one of them um, commented on this being a new American classic or even hailing it as a a grapes of wrath for Mm. our times. Mm, Yeah. Um, Really exactly like you were just saying, kind of capturing one of the the great issues of our times, Mm -hmm. a plight of times. Um, So uh, what a way to start off the new year. Yeah, absolutely. Ain't ain't that the truth? Yeah. Uh, Where are we going next? Oh, somewhere completely different, although Mm -hmm. another novel. Uh, This one is called The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Um, another novel, but the setting is quite different. This one is in Norway in 1617 in a coastal town called Finnmark. And uh, during a storm, it's a fishing village, and during the storm, uh, 40 of the men of the village are drowned. And th- this effectively leaves the women of the village to fend for themselves. And in- into this scene comes uh, Absalom Cornet. Cornet? He's a Scot, uh, and he's been busy uh, burning witches in the name of Christianity in Scotland. But he shows up into this uh, Norwegian uh, village, and he finds it ripe for conversion. And uh, But his young wife is quite taken by the independence of these women. And so there's a lot of... Um, tensions happening uh, through this book um, it you know clash of uh, different definitions of good and evil uh, definitions of civilization um, all within the confines of this secluded setting and I have to say that with that setup I was expecting certain things and I got something quite different so uh, always nice when surprises surprise. happen yeah. exactly yeah maybe somebody else would go in expecting what it delivers but for me uh, yeah I got quite a different novel that I than I was expecting which uh, I always enjoy that yeah, 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 I think we all do. That, yeah, that little so. bit of surprise goes a, a real long way. Yeah, um, so, so. so we started in the present day. Mm-hmm. We've gone back to the uh, 17th <laughs> century. True. And na- now we jump back to the present day, wow, right? Good, good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hadn't noticed that. But yes, this is uh, we're going to go into the future with William Gibson. Uh, his new book is called Agency. 
And a new book, new novel by William Gibson is always an event. Uh, he's already had a feature in the New Yorker magazine. The, the book isn't even out yet. Mm-hmm. It's going to be out later this month. Um, he writes science fiction. He writes uh, uh, books set in the far future, but his, uh, his future is always um, um, influenced by current events. Mm-hmm. And in fact, this book has been delayed several times because current events kept changing his imagined future. So oh he, had to, he had to uh, re- reimagine, <laughs> I guess. So that I find that very interesting. Uh, so the new novel is a follow-up on his previous one, the previous one called The Peripheral. It involves artificial intelligence, an apocalypse called the, known as the jackpot, and a, a woman named Verity Jane who is described as a gifted app whisperer. What a superpower. (laughs) What a superpower. Yeah, an app whisperer. Uh, Yeah, that's one, uh, well, yet to see (laughs) see in real life. And and you don't have the book here with you either. No, I I don't have a copy. I know, exactly. I haven't been able to read it myself. Um, I do have to say, though, that William Gibson coined the term cyberspace. Oh, that was his term? That's his term, yeah. I used it in his novel Neuromancer. So I'm impressed by that. Ain't that the truth. Wow, Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a term we use, um, well, I wouldn't say regularly, but it is a well-known term. And and there you go. The man who originated it. Uh, so you do have the next one with you in the studio. I do. Um, this one, uh, all about successful aging. Yes, it, that's what it's called, yeah. successful aging. Uh, the author, Daniel J. Levitin. Uh, this is nonfiction. Um, Levitin had a smash hit uh, with his first book, This Is Your, this brain, is your brain on brain Music. On music. Yeah, Boy, yeah, yeah. did we sell a lot of those. Yeah. And then he followed that up with titles, The World in Six Songs, The Organized Mind, A Field Guide for Lies. Levitin is a neuroscientist, he's a cognitive psychologist, but he's got expertise in music theory. Um, he's worked on albums uh, by the likes of Joni Mitchell and Steely Dan, Stevie Wonder, among mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. Uh, this new book is about the stage of life uh, 60 plus, and it, it's, he describes it as a unique developmental stage, not that different from infancy or adolescence. It has its own demands and its own advantages. He uh, outlines the ways that we as uh, individuals can optimize the experience of of the years past 60, but also how society should be taking advantage of um, the experience and the uh, uh, wisdom that comes uh, in those years. So a very interesting book. Um, He's a world-class presenter. Mm -hmm. He's done TED Talks. He draws on his past life as a stand-up comedian. He's written jokes for like Robin Williams and so on. This guy is uh, is multi-talented. And we have the Great privilege of having him uh, in Winnipeg. He's coming no way. Uh, on uh, Monday, January twenty seventh. We're going to mark it on the, the calendar. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah this that's is going to be a real, uh, real great, um, great evening. We're having it at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Selling tickets. The tickets are sixty dollars. You get a copy of the book, a new hardcover book, uh, as well as two admission. So pretty good deal. And uh, I think uh, a really enjoyable evening, and, and you'll learn a lot, I think. Uh, he's and, got a lot to say. And like you say, he's just such a, a great presenter, a real mm-hmm. renaissance man. Yeah. Um, and, and he makes it a, approachable and understandable. And you yeah. can watch his TED Talks on, on YouTube and all yeah. of that. A very, very accessible uh, writer. Um, this is your brain on music. Yeah. I'm sure listeners have read it. I'm sure, too. Um, uh, and so this is just his latest, and I imagine also a very, uh, not an easy read, but no. um, un- understandable. Understandable. You'll learn a lot, which is which is great. And you can see him here in person. That's, mm-hmm. uh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, I think so. We close things out with a, a delicious little morsel, mm-hmm. a little cookbook selection. Cookbook. I'm always a sucker for cookbooks. This you and one, I both. <laughs> this one is called The Joyous Cookbook. It's by Joy McCarthy. Nice. Joy McCarthy is a very popular blogger. Uh, she has a blog called Joyous Health, and she shares her love for simple, healthy cooking that tastes amazing. Um, this is a, it's a healthy eating cookbook. It's got vegan and vegetarian recipes in it, but it's also got lots in there for the carnivore at your table. Uh, I received a copy months ago. I think I got it mine in in uh, September, and so I have done quite a bit of research, Simon. You have, and I can. Well, thank uh, you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and I can highly recommend the creamy kale and apricot salad with roasted chickpeas, the roasted root veggies, the turmeric butternut squash soup, one pop paprika chicken, the baked chicken with Dijon maple marinade, which was fantastic, the baked salmon with caper dill pesto. I've made a lot of I was going to say extensive book. research no. you've done. Well, now I'm getting myself hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so it's not a uh, not a cookbook or not every cookbook I should say do I go back to with enthusiasm and where every recipe just works. And yeah. this one is uh, one of those uh, one of those that uh, yeah, I'm uh, I was looking through it yesterday. <laughs> There's like half a dozen, yeah, I got half a dozen more immediately. Too, one one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one is uh, is a special one and we've got it featured uh, for 
for the next couple of months. And it might be able to help with one of those other resolutions, eating well, yeah, right? It, so it absolutely kind of ties does, it does that, but it, it, it really does. They taste fantastic. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm missing a thing with it. With it. Um, so, Chris, we, we started off talking about New Year, New You, and uh, new at, at McNally Robinson this year. Uh, you guys are, are doing an electronic newsletter, right? We are, yeah. We're changing our, our um, methods, I guess, a little bit. Um, the release season in January, February is not huge, so and July, August, the same way. So we've decided that um, the expense of, of printing and mailing uh, those two newsletters, those two editions of our newsletter, are, aren't worth it. So we are moving to just an electronic version of our January and February l- newsletters. So look for that in your e- uh, in your email. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have don't see it, you can sign up at our uh, on our website. But if you are if you are currently receiving our physical newsletters in the mail, then uh, if you've given us your email address, you will receive have received that yesterday, really. Mm-hmm. And then in March, April, May, June, we'll go back to normal and we will print a, a newsletter. The busy season. Busy season again. And then uh, September, October, we'll print a newsletter as usual. And, and uh, November, December, we'll have our usual books of the season catalog. So just a little bit different, but uh, going a little bit more electronic, not entirely. Not entirely. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for coming by. Wishing you you a wonderful new year. Thank you. You too.